You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Listen to more Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. The Magrito Podcast Network. Three, two, one. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Thanks for coming back to another episode of the Mind Buzz podcast, the podcast that talks to your favorite artists, your favorite podcasters, entrepreneurs, and people just like you. The Mind Buzz, the my ba 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 ba, the Mind Buzz is partnered with Migrito Industries. Migrito Industries is a Latino and Chicano independent record label, art collective, and podcast network. It's not just the Mind Buzz on the podcast network or Chicano Shuffle. We have Emo Brown, Chicano Shuffle, West Coast Pop Lock Podcast, and now Tragos Amargos, from comedy to radio personalities, My Grito, and the podcast network is, is pretty cool. So if you like this, explore your options, right? If you're a podcast listener like at Amber. <laughs> I, I actually actually uh i don't even listen to our own no, I'm, just oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> the truth comes out <laughs> no, ladies I'm and kidding. gentlemen the truth comes I out i live it i live it that's why yeah true <laughs> so uh besides all those good stuff what do we have coming up amber um what do we oh on saturday we have the chicano shuffle pachanga so we'll be celebrating with them right sure I'll be there at Nativo in Highland Park. If Highland you haven't Park. gotten your tickets, go to Chicano Shuffle on Instagram or Magrito.net. I believe Oscar and Magrito have a, um, what do they have? They have one of those, uh, uh, what are those things called? The, the, the what? The codes for oh, Lyft. Promo and, code? Yeah, promo code for Lyft and I guess Airbnb too. <laughs> So if you guys, they're gonna be so mad at you guys. <laughs> it's fine. He'll get me back. He's uh, I think Oscar's in a, uh, he's in a revengeful mood. Got it. These days, uh, we also have our open mic in the city of Paramount at Orchateria Real Luna, and that is what date? October twenty sixth. October twenty sixth. So we should be putting out a flyer and call to action this week. So if you are a musician, comedian. A dancer or just have any talent and you want to come out and participate um yeah sign up it's really fun and we're doing a halloween themed right yeah. costumes and everything yep yeah. all right awesome. yeah we will be in costumes for that day so even if you don't even if, if you don't have a talent then just come out and just see me in my costume that's it <laughs> and support the other <laughs> artists sure <laughs> there's that too if you want <laughs> Uh, but besides that, uh, what else do we got? That's it, right? Just those That's two it. things for this month, yeah. For October, um, so yeah, uh, come out. Don't forget to add us on. Uh, I was gonna say Facebook. I don't really use Facebook that often. Instagram, check us out on Instagram. But uh, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce to you our guests for this evening, Janelle and Kai. From Stronger Together Now. What's up, guys? Thanks hey, for coming out. Thanks for having us. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, even we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. You invited me out to do your event. Was it like uh, to be a guest judge? That's right. Yeah. So how um, great event, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for being there. Yeah, the event you're talking about was a Soul Food Fest part two. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, part two. So there's a part one. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah, in February we do it for Black History Month. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like part four then. Like, I mean, we, like could, four we could take part it every single month. <laughs> you know, we celebrate Black History Month all year long. Part two, part four, part seven. 
<laughs> it was fun though. It was a lot of fun to see the community and and uh, all the vendors. I love the dancers. Kai, I like how you kind of organized, you know, that dance off that that w- they didn't really want to do, but they ended up doing. I thought that was really really cool and and fun. So that, that's awesome that, that you. That was all on the spot, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. like that's the problem with kids. Like when you don't want them to do stuff, they don't do. They do it, and when you want them to do stuff, they don't do it. They don't. So it's like. <laughs> You guys have free reign to do what you want to do. And, you know, they took the former, not the latter. <laughs> Amber, that's smart, man. So if you need me to do something, just tell me the opposite. Got and it. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I work like a child. In yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Oh, it is? It is. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm not alone. No. Oh, all right. It's true. <laughs> Got it. But yeah, we had a magnif- magnificent time out there. Yeah. Eating all the food. Uh, I wish we would have picked up some food before getting there because Amber was like sneaking in onto my plate. Oh, really? We yeah. didn't know that you were having some of your food taken away from you. I know. What a liar. You're Amber. asking. You're eyeballing it. I was not even close to him. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. It was all good. But uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And um, well, actually, uh, Two Souls was out there too. And she's in studio this evening. That's right. Yeah. Two souls in the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was great. I appreciate it. Thanks for the... I got to... So I have to go get a frame now because you, you gave me that certificate. That's certificate. Right. And yeah. I need to hang it out. So, I mean, part of the reason we invited you was so you would know what the event would be like, what our vibe is like at our events because we have one coming up that we're going to be talking about later on in the show. And, uh, you know, any time that you invite somebody to your house for a party, they need to know what it is. You know, mm. They need to know what they're coming to celebrate. Yeah, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> is this radio Janelle or is this real Janelle? Like, I don't know who this is, but hey, man, I uh, Okay, invite them to the crib. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they just need to get a feel for how we do our events. And we have a good time, you know, and it's it's many aspects, right? We have the community involved through our our giving market. So we always give away something at our markets. Um, this past event where, where you came through, um, we were giving away helmets because it was Pedestrian Safety Month. That's right. But there's been months in the past where we give away hygiene items, um, pet goods, food. Um, it's just a matter of what the theme is for that month. Okay. So do you do do you do events like every month, it seems? So we have yeah. giving Sundays on the last Sunday of most months. Um, in the summer, we do take a break because it gets too hot. And all of our focus goes into Juneteenth. I can't stand the heat. Kai's all right with it, but I'm very heat sensitive. Do you do all of your events in Redlands or is it throughout the Inland Empire? We service the Inland Empire, but we started our roots in Redlands because there's not really culturally significant events happening over there. No, that makes sense. So we're tapping Sorry, in. Redlands. Yeah. Sorry. We apologize. No, but you guys are throwing <laughs> your guys' events. You guys are and you guys are changing that, right? Right. We're trying to create that space where people feel safe and celebrated. And so we try to have it consistently in one city before we start really making our stamp in other cities. So yeah. San Bernardino is next for twenty twenty four. So Stronger Together Now is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, correct? Mm-hmm. So can you guys tell me, what was the beginning? Go ahead, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> you love telling the, the start of it. What? Yeah. I mean, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um. So it was during COVID and we were just, we were dating. We're still dating. And we were... Her daughter was having issues mm-hmm. as far as like trying. She was with us all the time. And like her, da- her daughter's cool, but her daughter is like a bully to me a lot of the times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was like, man, like I got to get this girl off of me because she's she's beating me in Uno. 
She's beating me. And what's the name of this sequence, cat game? Sequence. sequence. This game. There's fat cats. You got to match them up and stuff. So I'm just like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but they don't want to play me in any of the sports that I'm good at. So I'm like, well, let's play basketball. No, you're too good. So right. I had to. That's not fair. We played soccer. I destroyed him. It was. Yeah. It wasn't even close. So we would always. I'd lose in Uno. So I was like, you know what? We need to figure out a way to kind of find things for her to do. Because during COVID, she couldn't really interact with her friends at school. She couldn't do things in school. So she was always with us. So we came up with an idea. Um, I was watching the NBA game. And they had the um, the NBA. They were in an actual bubble. So they had the NBA bubble. Where they were at um, the Orlando, uh, like Orlando Sports Studio. They have a basketball court there and hotels and stuff there. So I was like, you know, maybe we could kind of piggyback off of what they're doing and create our own sports bubble. So thank uh, the folks in San Bernardino County. They were actually able to get us um, COVID tests. So what we would do is we would get the COVID test and we would cultivate an actual bubble. We would have the kids test around Wednesday and then they would be able to participate in the bubble um, Saturday. So what that would ensure is the kids would be safe. Um, the parents obviously living in the same household as the kids would be safe. And then we would be able to have our sports bubble that Saturday and um, ensure the participants of the class that, you know, everyone was uh, free of COVID. And it really, really helps to decrease anxiety in these kids. Wow, that's really smart. That's... Yeah, I mean, especially with my daughter, we saw it pretty quickly, but with more participants and how they came together every week, every Saturday. They look forward to it. And we would switch up every week different themes. We're really good at that, just, you know, <laughs> pulling in different themes. We would have them learn how to um, make tie-dye shirts one week. The next week they would make swords and shields out of cardboard and paint them. Another week they'd ride bicycles. we play football, soccer, like balloon fights. We had so many different ways of just keeping them active and happy and interacting. The Mind Buzz is powered by Mind Buzz Media. Mind Buzz Media is an on-site video and audio podcast production company. Have you ever thought about starting your own video and audio podcast? Or do you have an existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Mind Buzz Media brings a professional podcast studio to you. Visit mindbuzz.org for more. So you found something that you you found a, a I guess like a need, right? And then just try to fill it in your own creative way. Yeah, I think because before that we had been out protesting um kai more than me as a single mom it just was hard to get out like that all the time and we knew that we needed to create some type of programs locally and so that's one of the first ones that we really birthed he's the idea man i'm the action woman so (laughs) you give me an idea i organize it and make it happen um and now we have obviously a team um but yeah i mean we just wanted to we wanted to make things better. Uh, if the situation is what it is, then let's use our powers to create something impactful. I was tired of losing to Uno. That's that's where it really <laughs> came from. Like, I don't want to hear. That was your main motivation. That's fine. You know, we wanted to impact the community. But I was. She just would hold the draw five cards the whole she game. She still does. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll have twenty cards in her in her deck, and it's just draw five. And they're you all. You guys for ever me. played Uno Flip? Nuh-uh. Okay, that's the dark side. So you have the regular light side of Uno, and then you flip it over to the dark side. That's where you get those plus fives that he's talking Whoa. about. Whoa. And you can Wait, put those. Oh, plus fives, because usually they're they're like plus four, two. no? Plus two, two? plus four. Oh, okay. So she's got 10 of them for me. Yeah. <laughs> Her mom doesn't get any of them at all. Nope. Sometimes she, you know what I've had to. She's cooking the food at the house. There's no, <laughs> I've had to draw no. thirty before. I just don't complain. He wants to win. He's so competitive. <laughs> like, come on, it's just a game. So thank you, uh, folks at Uno. Maybe we need a sponsor for. Oh, Uno. maybe yeah. that would be good. Yeah, because <laughs> Uno created the kids' sports bubble and stronger together now. That sure. is, 
That's awesome. That's really so cool. So then, I mean, as the environment started to change again and mm-hmm. things started opening up, we didn't need the kids' sports bubble. So unfortunately, it was, you know, bottled in time. It was a beautiful time, too. So after that changed, what what was the next step after that? Like after, because this was all birthed during COVID, right? Mm-hmm. So after everything started opening up, what was the next move from then? As she uh, she mentioned that I was going to a lot of protests. Okay. Um, so I was frequent in the L.A. area, um, South L.A., um, like you said, Pico Rivera, uh, Boyle Heights. We even did some in East L.A. It was crazy. Um, and what happened with that was they did a dance for black lives. So for me, I'm like, okay, I didn't necessarily understand the concept because I'm like, okay, we'll dance for black lives. I didn't necessarily see it the same way in the Inland Empire. I just felt that like we should just dance and celebrate and come together. I understood the dance for black lives there because there were so many folks of color, be them brown and Hispanic people that were, you know, being shot. But for us, it was more so let's just um, let's just get folks in the area to dance, you know, to have a good time and just fellowship with each other. So um, our first one that we did after the sports bubble was dance for um, like the Dino or dance for Riverside. Riverside. And um, similar, you know, just getting folks together. We we started doing um, the vending. So we would have vendors. Um, we had a couple of artists. Um, shout out to Planet Love, my boy. Um, What's this guy's name? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. But um, Savvy. And uh, we had his band out there. And that was like kind of like what we're talking about Lamaze later. But that was really us getting into the idea of like being entertainment and, and really bringing a product. Um, you can do whatever you want in the community. But if you're not generating revenue, if you're not making money, you know, then it's just kind of like, oh, well, you know, you're just doing stuff. In the sandlot kind of. You're not going to sustain. Right. And so. honestly, like we needed to support the vendors because they too were being isolated during COVID. There weren't events going on. There's no permits being put out there. So we would organize like a protest and then just have vendors there and not do the <laughs> protest because that's the only way we could get into the parks and actually have an event. Oh, so it was like a organized. It was a loophole. Yeah. Oh, got it. Is that what we did? Yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> He's like, that's, hey, yeah. that, that's, that's how you guys pulled it Don't off? Don't tell okay. him the secret sauce. All right. But then we also had, you know, people speak. We always have open mic at our events. So if people want to talk about what's going on in their community or successes they're having, they're able to do that. And so it brought community together at a time when it was divided and isolated. And the two main um people isolated in that were youth and elders and so that became like our main focus um making sure that we're providing resources and connections for them nice so throughout all this that you did when did you make the change to actually go and create a oh, nonprofit God. organization april 23rd 2021 Okay, so it was a few months after you, you decided. Yeah. It what, was, what was the deciding factor to where you, you were like, you know what, let's get some paperwork on this thing that we're I can, doing. I can take that one go too. Because he wants to take <laughs> it. Yeah, I can take that one too. Credit. No. <laughs> is the camera on me? Yes, yeah, yeah. This girl, man. Oh my God. <laughs> no. You guys sound like us. <laughs> no, no. So it was what it, what it initially happened was I'm going to protest mm-hmm. every week. Every week. And so I actually got hit with a rubber bullet. Um, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. At the at the South uh, South L.A. Um, police station, which was like literally like across the street from my grandma's house at the time. Rest in peace, grandma. But um, I got hit with a bullet. So I'm like, man, I can't do this every week. Like this is I don't have insurance for these types of things. I don't think there's protest insurance. So I'm like, OK, I got hit with a bullet. And then actually. Got arrested going to an Adelanto protest where there was a um, kids in cages protest. So I went and, um, you know, showed my support um, for the folks that were in the cages and stuff like that. And you got beat down. Didn't get beat down. But, you know, basically that was that was my thought process. He got aggressively arrested. So my thought process was like, OK, I can't have 
because our group was primarily women. There was a couple of guys that were mixed in, but I'm like, I can't have them at protests with me, you know, because like when I get in a protest, when I go to a protest, like I'm like Mashika, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a warrior, like I'm there to do a job. Like if I see something's happening to someone, I'm going to respond. If I see um, something that I don't feel is right, be it right or wrong, like as a man, I feel, okay, well, I have to step in. And that's an, uh, essentially what happened was a young lady was assaulted by the police and I stepped in and, you know, consequently I was arrested. So um, after that, it was like, I can't, I can't have a record. I can't um, continue, continue to put myself in this type of danger. So and we knew protesting would only go so far. Like we needed to make some changes locally and so by founding a nonprofit, we were able to establish ourselves more as not just an organization that's out there, but an actual business, an entity that people can support with their money and actually have a tax write-off for the money that they're contributing to our, um, our organization. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, um, it was pretty clear that we needed to make a move. And so we had, I think, to start, we had five board members plus ourselves. So it wasn't small. Like most people have a hard time finding board members, but it was all the paperwork. There's a lot of a lot of things you have to put in place. To and those recycling. board members are part of, that's the team that you brought up earlier? Yeah, so yeah. that's that's a team that started with us from the very beginning um, and now we're 13 strong, probably 15 Whoa. after next week. I need to nice. vet two more people. After yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Going through their application. <laughs> <laughs> so I seen uh, on your guys' Instagram about a new building or a new rental space. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, our physical address before was down the street from where we are now, mm -hmm. and it was ground level, and it got broken into twice. Oh. oh, no. Yeah, so I think, honestly, it was a number of things that probably contributed to that. We used to have, um, we used to have neighbors next to us that would actually, it was a food pantry, and would give out food. Mm -hmm. They moved, and so... You know, we had a lot of donations inside, maybe looking in the window. They just, hmm. they felt like they weren't getting the stuff they needed next door. So we just became a quick way to get stuff. Yeah. So that happened twice and it was time to go. <laughs> like we can't just, that's not sustainable either. Right. Yeah. Of course not. Especially for a nonprofit that's not making money. Like we just started paying ourselves this year sporadically. It's not happening all the time. And that's only based on, you know, the type of revenue that we're actually generating. So if we're losing donations like that, that's not helping the community. And it's actually creating a problem for us. So we had to move. Wow. Yeah. Was, was it a bigger location than than you were before? No, we actually had a lot of space over there. Oh, yeah. It was like, you know, it was good for storage. We had a lot of space to keep all our donations. Right. We don't have that type of space mm. anymore. We just really have a professional office space. Oh, that's cool. It's in Studio D, which is above Chase Bank, right downtown off of D Street in San Bernardino. And so we have a collective shared space with other nonprofits and community members. And I think long term, that's what we need because we need the space to do workshops. We need the conference center for our board meetings. So it was a step up in a different direction that's going to help us grow and give us the resources we need to be uh, more efficient at what we do. That's great. Um, so I know that you guys were saying um, kind of that you uh, brought your organization and your events to Redlands, right? I'm fairly new to Redlands. I mean, I... I just found out Redlands. I don't want to say existed, but because I'm I'm from like the the Long Beach area, so I grew up I grew oh, up yeah. over there, right? Mm -hmm. And I just started coming to the IE four years ago because of Gil, um, that he's out here. But um, you know, I I just visited Redlands maybe last year. Um, it's beautiful, right? And I don't know the history of Redlands. I don't know, you know, but from what I see, it's beautiful. Um, but kind of like what what was the um, 
I don't want to say like the turning point, but you guys are saying, you know, you, you needed to bring this to Redlands, right? To to the, your area. Um, how did the community in Redlands first react to you guys uh, putting events together or even doing some of this of these things? I mean, did you guys have pushback? Did you guys have a lot of support? Like kind of walk us through through what it was, um, you know, you guys kind of assembling. I think once, once um, the city opened back up after COVID, there were they were receptive to having events, but there were also some hesitations. Um, but we felt supported. I don't think that there was any backlash at the beginning at all, um, except for when we. I'm getting there. Relax. Um, when we did our first <laughs> Juneteenth event. Uh -uh. But, no, no, before that. All right, go ahead. Okay. Before that, remember. So we um we did our event with the hoop bus. So shout out to the hoop bus. Um, it's a basketball court. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, you see, that was our first event. <laughs> that was on. <laughs> that was on August. Just forgot. That huh? was before we were even a nonprofit, though. It don't, I don't think that matter, counts. man. All right, go ahead. It don't matter. That's part of the archive. Yeah, okay. man. <laughs> I got the picture on my Instagram. He's I'll got receipts. Guys, Janelle, got he's got receipts. He does, he does. So I've been checked. So we had uh, it's a basketball court. And they actually fitted the front and the back um, a bus with basketball courts attached to it. So, um, whoa, that sounds pretty cool. It's really cool. You have a picture of that? Yeah, and they actually you can pull it up. They traveled all the way to Washington D.C. Whoa, yes, and back. Yes, so it's an actual bus, mm -hmm. school bus, like the Magic School yeah. bus, with basketball courts on it. So, our one of our first events in Redlands, um, we were able to shut down Fifth Street, which is the street that's adjacent to Ed Hales Park. And um, <laughs> this guy, he had to be like 70 years old. He's like, well, you guys are just, you know, you guys are disallowing people to enjoy themselves in the city. And we're like, no, we went to City Hall. We got the permits. We have mm -hmm. the proper um, paperwork. And we went through the proper channels to be able to make this event happen. Like, we just didn't get the bus and shut the street down. So, um, yeah, I, he was there. Well, that's kind of the he thing. Like, there. You have these yeah. townies who grow up there. And yeah, they think man. that they can, like, tell you what the law is. And they may not know all the ins and outs. And, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into event planning. If oh, yeah. you've never done it. Yeah. Like, there's lots of things mm -hmm. that you have to do. You don't just put out an event without any permission. Right. You know? So he just wasn't privy to that information. And he was upset. No, he was privy to it. And no disrespect. <laughs> but he was an older white guy. And that's why he felt that he could do what he wanted to do. Because he's like, well, I'm from Redlands. And, you know, this this basketball court seems yeah. like an obstruction. So, you know, as we are familiar, the colonizer. There, there is a certain entitlement. <laughs> yes. There is a certain entitlement that people feel they have since they've yeah. lived there their whole life. It's it's. And, and that and that's kind of what I wanted to ask without asking, <laughs> right? Because I I mean again I'm fairly new to Redlands. I don't know the history of Redlands, but oh, from yeah, what yeah. I see, I mean, is that the same one right there? Is this yeah, the but one? This yeah, this is this is the old guy that. Oh, the Tim. Yes, we had to kiss and make up. <laughs> So we want we yeah. want him over eventually. Yes, but he uh, and played. you, you know. guys should have had like a basketball showdown, like Man. his team versus your team. That's yeah, funny. and well, whoever you know. wins, mm -hmm. either if he wins, you guys have to move well, the. As long as he doesn't break a hip, we're good. Exactly, right? that's fine. <laughs> but Man. I mean, there were protests in Redlands, so we really? kind of knew the terrain before we started doing okay. events, right? Because they had two, what, two or three protests in Redlands, and one got Ooh, la, la. Oh, and this is all during. COVID. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That will protest. I mean, there, there's definitely detractors in Redlands. Our biggest detractors have been in Redlands. So you what? would say, why do you Detractors, you, you mean by like people going against the the movement and what you guys are doing? What nationality are they? <laughs> Tractors. I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> detractors would be detractors as okay. soon as you say inclusivity mm -hmm. there's people who are against that. yeah gotcha okay, got it. the way as soon as you say safe spaces creating safe spaces mm -hmm. people are against but, that. but why do you think that it's such a 
like why why do you think that those words because piss so many people become off become political yeah. education's political healthcare is political like everything is touchy yeah, and then one... you have multiple generations at bat with each other that don't agree they're conservative we're liberal like it's just yeah. there's too many intersectionalities on that once you start saying all those buzzwords like uh, exclusivity uh, whatever uh, safe spaces they and I'm meaning the the far right. They already have this like built into their mind. Like anybody Reject. that is is saying that they're automatically a liberal or a socialist or a socialist or an anarchist or an anarchist. <laughs> what else did they call you guys? <laughs> Black. I mean, I've been called everything. Black. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just it's it's tough. Um, more often than not, maybe those words are a little bit bigger than they're used to hearing but i mean the the thing that i try to do especially for me as a as a black person as a man of color i try to explain to them that i may not necessarily agree with what we're doing like i'm not um i'm not a socero she is you know but i can support lamaz because it's something that she has what's done. a socero she's a salsa dancer yeah, I've been oh, a salsa okay. dancer oh, okay. for 25 yeah. years. Salsera, but a, a man would be a salsero. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's that's not a scene that I'm in, but I can support it. I may not necessarily have to agree with it. I may not even partake in salsa right. dancing, but I want to be as supportive as I can be. And I think what we do a really good job of is when we do our events, we get um, people that know what it is that we're doing. If we don't, you know, I'm not going to throw a Black History Month if I'm not black. That would be stupid. So we try to, for sure, get people, if we are knowledgeable about it, we try to find people that are. So that provides the inclusivity. Mm -hmm. I'm not um, part of the LBGT community. That doesn't mean I can't support it. But I'm not going to be the one who's going to take the reins for that particular event. So I would get someone of that community to say, you know what, let's do this, let's do that. And then, you know, they take the lead and, and we just support them as a nonprofit the best way that we can. So an example would be last year, and and we keep mentioning this word, Lamas. Lamas is our event that we're having in October. But last year, we called it the Latina Festival, which we got backlash for because it's not an inclusive type of name. Not everybody identifies with Latina mm -hmm. culture. So our um, promotional items for that needed to kind of supplement reflect. that right so mexican indigena um just making sure that we reflect every culture not just one type of culture mm -hmm. so this year we changed the name to be more inclusive because because we learned from that like we're okay with being corrected and learning from it but we're not okay with people targeting us and making us feel like we are horrible people for trying to do something good mm -hmm. right and last year we did have a drag show we had a drag. How did that go over? I, uh, you know, we. we and the, this <laughs> was this was still in the city of Redlands. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So okay, let's let's talk Baby about that. Baby girl because, is bold. Because oh my God. we had one dancer who was a drag dancer. Okay. But um, this was during, this was during campaign season for the school district. Oh. And there were volunteers with BSU with other organizations. At our event, and, and what is BSU? Black Black, Black Student, Student Union. Union. Okay. Um, there were pictures of the drag dancer giving dollars to the little kids who were dancing to just having fun, <laughs> but the way it was spun was totally horrific, and we're indoctrinating these kids and all kinds of just backlash for that. And where did all this backlash come out of? Like, was it on? social media was it on the yeah, newspaper Instagram. what was it we we try not to mention our detractors okay uh, we just you know we try to stay as neutral as possible but um the school board obviously ran with it so at that particular school board meeting there was maybe 1500 to 2000 people yeah there was one meeting that Whoa. happened before people were elected on okay it was, big time. It was over 1500 people that came to that one meeting the meeting I left at 11. It went past 11 p.m. that night. Oh. We were there from 4 p.m. to 11. I was in the van that long? 
Yeah. He was sleeping outside. So he makes sure he's on he's on site in case anything happens. But we can't even get a hold of him because he's sleeping in the van. Listen. He's reinforcement and he's snoring. Listen, listen, man. He's like, I got your back. Linda. He's snoring. Listen, Linda, 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 Linda. Oh, my God. I have to be on site because if anything does happen, I need to be there. But I'm also a target as well. I'm, 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 I'm a black we man. Get it. In Redlands. Come on. Oh, come on. So anyways, it was a long... I mean, those are the type of situations that anybody who's trying to, you know, use this as propaganda and for their platform and to just spin it and have narratives, that was probably one of the, the biggest ones we went to that were... It was just all over the place. They couldn't even continue with the meeting because people just started getting out of hand so these are the things that you know happen in a town like redlands and it can happen anywhere but when you have um huntington beach when you have a spectrum yeah. you know you have a spectrum of conservative republicans old money who have lived there for many many years and then you have the progressives moving in and they're younger and they want things to change and then you have two women on the board or city council, three men on the city council, they're not going to line up. You know, it's yeah. it's going to be a challenge no matter what's coming at you. So it's been a lot of that drama in that space. And it's not that we don't want to be there. We do want to be there because it's telling us that we're actually making some positive impact because people are learning about other cultures in a way that's not being jammed down their throat. Yeah. We're just trying to have fun, come out, have, have fun, enjoy, learn how to salsa dance, listen to music, talk to people in a, a way that you can connect with one another in a meaningful way. And you, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm like, I, I was having <laughs> it. Maybe it's my um, what is it called? Like my trauma. Right. Mm. So when when you guys did the event. And you guys brought out the dancers, right? So there was two different the different dance groups, um, and and I grew up in a city where it's predominantly Latinos and 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 you know, um, black students, and it was I don't know we probably had not even one white person in our school, but what I'm what I'm getting at was that we were always pitted against each other, right? Mm -hmm. We were. There was times, I mean, I remember one time, particularly in lunchtime, you know, there was this thing that they, it was like black students against the Latino students. And it was like this huge fight. And it was like everybody fighting everyone, even if they were your friends, even, I mean, I didn't, I, I'm a weenie, so I don't fight. But, <laughs> but still, you know, even if you saw friends that were friends and it was just this thing where it was like, like everyone was pitted against each other, right? And I feel like, it's always been like that, right? It, or, or it was in the past, or and I hope that it's changing, but I still feel like it is. So when when I seen the dance off, I think a part of me was like, oh, like you know, <laughs> it took me back to to, to high the school, lunchroom, to my lunchroom where I was like, <laughs> oh, you know. But then after to see like just how like even the parents were having a good time and and yeah. and the kids were and it just like it eased my anxiety and i'm not going to lie i was anxious but why because i i grew up in 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 that scene i grew up you know knowing that and and it, it's it's not a good place to grow up but it was reality right it was it was my traumas and things that i i've gotten you know working through and over and everything but to see that and then to after see like they're just having fun and everyone was like having fun there was no drama there was nothing and then just to see the overall spectrum of the event to me it was just like it was really nice honestly i'm so glad you got to experience it, it in yeah a positive it was way. It, it was great like it it really i'm i'm telling you it took me back for a second and then after i was like no you know what this is this is the life that we're living now it's like things are changing things are progressing and it starts with the youth like i really like that you you like Kai like I don't want to say you made them but you you, you encouraged them, them. <laughs> you encouraged he them to dance them. no but even with you saying like I don't want you know any like hands being thrown in front of each other and then you made them like hug each other after and and, yeah. and you know like it, it was just like it was beautiful honestly I, I, it was really awesome to see and and I commend you guys for what you're doing I was in those lunch rooms yeah uh, shout out to A.V. Miller <laughs> 
class of 2003. Yeah, I didn't do any of the fights because I had like sports after after school. So <laughs> I would see it happen. But I mean, it's it's a different time. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can remember my mom telling me um, she passed, but. She was like, yeah, man, when we were in L.A., man, the blacks and the Mexicans, we used to get down. Like, we were we were together. And so I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And um, it was just a point to where she was like, no, we did have that commonality. And we did have community. And we did have um, maybe a common foe or, or maybe a common goal. But sports has always been, like, my anchor. And so I think... It was really important. And a lot of the parents walked up to me after were like, yo, I really appreciate that because, you know, for men, we understand, you know, maybe I don't like you. Maybe I do. But at the end of the day, like we're men and we have to, you know, be respectful of each other. I'll go home and I'll probably be like, yeah, I don't like Gil. You know, he's a jerk. <laughs> but at least when we're in front of each other, you know, in, in that exchange. OK, you know, what's up, bro? How you doing? How's everything going? And so I think that's kind of good that I was trying to impart that on the young ladies because they're still athletes. And that was what I said, the dancing, salsa, gymnastics, that's a sport, you know, it's a discipline. And I think that it's really important to also kind of like let young ladies understand that you can still be sassy and you can still be, you know, confident. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're competitors, but you know, we want to all get home safe. We all want to have a good time. And that was really the nature of the event. I was telling them, like, we're not going to fight. You know, no one's going to win anything. But, yeah, e exchange, you know, your Instagram with these young ladies and, and let's create community. You know, maybe you guys will be on dancing teams in the future together. You don't know. But don't. we have to understand that, you know, you, you can say, but he is better than gumbo. At that Whatever. That's fine. <laughs> At the end of the day, we have to come together. You know, your culture, my culture, there's there's inferences and there's similarities between it but there's nothing wrong with enjoying what you like me enjoying what i like but also being mindful to be like you know what i like yours too and and you like mine too but i think so many people especially um as americans we're individualists people come from other countries latin america um europe and stuff like that and they're more countries you know so they have commonality between each other everyone in america is an individual so we just really need to understand that you can still like your individuality. You can still be Kai or Janelle or two souls. But when we come together as a community, you know, we have to accept each other. And I think that's where we're getting, you know, with the I intersectionality. Mean, personally, we've experienced that ourselves. So we want other people to understand it the way that we've come to understand it. We don't see eye to eye on everything. No. No, no. no man. And that's not just <laughs> culture. I mean, that's also... Me being a woman, him being a man, me being older, him being younger, me having kids, he doesn't have any. Like, there's a lot of differences that can pin us against each other. But there's also a lot of really profound overlapping commonalities that we can say, yeah, we have something in common. You know, we can find one thing. So that's really what we try to challenge everybody at our events to do is find something in common with each other. I like that. Instead of focusing on the differences, you got to focus on the sim similarities, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's this perpetual fear. Like hmm. right now, it's just all fear based. And that's why I really appreciate, Amber, you saying that it kind of changed your mindset because that's what we want to do. We don't want people to be fearful of coming to an event in Redlands because they're afraid that something might happen. <laughs> You, you know? got served. It was definitely a you got served <laughs> type of event. But I mean, that's what it is. Like, the more that we can focus on the similarities between our cultures, it's the same. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The cultures are the same. The, the things that we do within the respective cultures are different. But the food, different names. You know, right. the, the language, different words and different languages that tie into the same stuff. If you want to be an individual, that's fine. If if you want to, you know, harp yeah. on that, that's cool. It's hard when people start to use whatever their beliefs as a part of their identity. That's that's the hard part because you can tell them all day about like your side of whatever topic, but if no, it goes against their identity, then you got a problem. The stronger they identify with it, 
the harder it is to have a conversation. Right. It's hard to bridge that and have dialogue. I think since I want to say for the past few months, I've been practicing giving somebody my perspective one time and one time only. If okay. they don't want to understand that, then I'm going to move on because I don't got time. No, that. you don't. I, I hate don't. explaining myself. Yeah. I really do. So you're going to hear it once. Mm. I don't like to repeat. <laughs> right. Necessary. I mean, if, if it's something that's consistently like a consistent problem, With then maybe. All yeah, the right. Time. Right. It's hard. Kai, I have a question go, for you. Sure. How do you, just because like for me during 2020 and, and when everything was happening and the protests and everything, I, I didn't go out to protest, but I, I felt strongly, right, about everything that was happening, um, especially having, you know, uh, family members that are, are, you know, like biracial and, and everything. And I lost friends. I, I lost. I don't want to say I lost them. I separated myself from them, right, because of beliefs, because of of things they were saying or posting or or things like that. And and I think that like 2020, 2021, I was very angry. I was very angry at anyone that had something that didn't go with what, you know, I believed in and, and that I strongly believed in. Like, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you hold those emotions in for yourself? Like being an activist and, and going out there, like, like how, how do you kind of reel in those emotions of maybe being angry or overly upset about things or anything like that especially when speaking to someone that maybe doesn't have the same ideals as you like how, how do you how do you bring yourself back to center because that's <laughs> really hard for me that's easy for me i don't care like so what like just as long as you don't disrespect them just as long as you don't make them look like a fool um what they're going to believe is what they're going to believe um <laughs> when i was a little kid this is funny i didn't know anything about mexico so i went to school and i asked my mom i was like there's these kids and they say they're from this place called mexico and my mom's like yeah there's a country called mexico so i didn't i was ignorant to that you know that my teacher didn't teach us and i'm on a block and we're like one of two black families and there's nothing but hispanic people out here in the inland empire 1988 and i didn't know so it's more so just giving them, I guess, that leeway or giving them that platform to explain how you feel. It's not about being right or wrong. Like yeah. how you feel is how you feel. Now, if we're talking about, you know, heart mapping or, you know, basketball, who has the most points uh, in all time history? That's fact. You can't you can't, you know, uproot that. But I don't care. Like, I'm, I'm just going to be as respectful as I possibly can. I'll go home and I'll be like, man, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But just be respectful. Um, understand their position. They could be older. They could be from a community that, you know, doesn't um, understand black people, brown people, LBGTQ people. Like, I try to be, um, I guess, mindful of what they've gone through. You know, what I've gone through as a black person, as a black man, you don't have to... Um, Go through it yourself, but just understand that the playing field for me is different. You know, when a car, a police car pulls up behind me, you might be like, well, that's not a big deal. To me, it is. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing. There were people that supported the police. There were people that weren't. I'm just taking it from my perspective and what I'm going through. And that's really just how I sort through a lot of the things. I'm not going to be dismissive, but... It's relative to my experience. So if you have friends that, you know, support the badge and support the, the Blue Lives Matter, just love them the best that you can. But that's not your reality. That's not what you're dealing with and what you have to face on a day to day. So that's that's how I went through it with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and stuff like that was that was what people that look like me are facing. So, yeah, maybe maybe they should have stopped the car. Maybe they shouldn't have done drugs that day. Um, maybe they were out at the wrong time of night. All of these narratives that people will push and say, well, she shouldn't have wore those types of clothes. It's a different set of standards for women or, or people of color. So you just have to, you know, listen to them and, and let them have their position and then just kind of go on about it. You can't harbor any ill will or any ill feelings towards them because they're basing it on their reality and what they go through. Amber, I'm an empath, and so I struggled with it as well. 
Um, it's not always easy for us to say, I don't care what people think. Yeah. I do care what people think. I care what I think about myself. And I struggled with my own family, just kind of, you know, these are people you care about who are showing their true colors. Yeah, That's exactly. hard to deal with, you know. Maybe it's because, um, you know, part of them reflects part of you. and you're, Or maybe you realize, I didn't know my brother felt that way. It can make you feel conflicted. So I definitely can relate to the feelings you had. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it was it was hard because it was someone that I had let in to my home, to my family, to, you know, the people that I loved. And it was I felt like it was a direct attack to me because I was trying to defend the people that I love. And if you if they couldn't see them the way that I saw them and the love that I had for them, I was just like. I didn't know this, you know, and it's like it, I think it it kind of triggered my wanting to protect, you know, my protector side of of I kind of felt betrayed in, in the sense of 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 that, you know, that I opened my home and my family to this person and then to see all these things they were posting or saying or thought. And I was just like, wow, like, but, you know, that does teach you something about yourself. Right? It's a lesson. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the most important part. Like if if people walked away with all this experience that happened during the pandemic and all the things that took shape and didn't learn something from it, then that's the problem. It's a that, pandemic within themselves. That like, is the bigger issue. You just have to understand that man, woman, you know, whatever social class they fall under, you're not going to see things the same. You know what I mean? So if you can find some commonality, I like your shirt. Oh, well, yeah, but I got it from TGI Fridays or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> find something like kill them with kindness. You know what I mean? And and the Hispanics, women, black people, we've had to do that for so long. So I can understand when some people are like, nah, bro, I'm good. Like, I don't want to keep doing it. But you just have to, you know, you sometimes through ignorance, you have to kind of just you know doesn't it get kindness doesn't it get exhausting though to to keep doing that to keep being the better person each and every time in my personal experience no mm -hmm. um but i can see i can see you know what i mean i can see where you're it going like it's like every situation you're, you're just like i have to not say anything because because of this person right, right? or i i you can't def in a way, you can't defend yourself, and you've—I mean, at least for me—I feel like I don't want to wait. I don't want to open up that kind of worms. I'm just going to leave it alone, right? Or or try to defend myself, right? But that always happens. It it always happens. Gil, I mean, Amber would tell me, Gil, just be the bigger person. Don't don't even feed into whatever's happening at that time, right? But it happens all the time, and it's right. like, dude, I have to always be the better person like where like how do you deal with that well man that's 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 an excellent question um there's that fine line and initially she was the ceo you know she was the ceo because of my initial trepidation of being a face of an organization as a black man because i'm like man with a backlash we're talking about backlash with mlk and and you know uh che Guevara and 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 um, Malcolm X. So I was like, man, I don't know if I want to be the face of the organization. Um, maybe that's uh, my humility. Maybe that's my patience as an individual. But um, it sucks. And we go back and forth at, all mm -hmm. the time. As a black man, that's what I've been tasked to do. Yeah. And if you can't navigate through that and, and sort through it, you know, um, God bless you, but you're probably not gonna live long, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's just the the un um unfavorable answer for a lot of people. But my uncles, cousins, grandparents, you know, people that were enslaved. If you can't sort through it and just say, well, you know what, man, I just gotta let it happen. You know, they say a lot of us die young, and maybe those were the ones that couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. sort through it. But yeah. for me. Uh, to be 37, I'm going to be 38 in December. That's what's kept me alive. 
you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I don't want to make it seem like this is a game. My patience, my humility, my ability to just be like, all right, it's not a big deal. That's what's kept me alive. So that's that's my answer. I can't necessarily <laughs> say it for you as a Hispanic man, but I'm sure there's, there's similarities. But if you can't hold your tongue, if you can't, oh, man, the dude cut me off. Oh, man, you know, he called me the N-word. Yeah. As a black and or hard, a brown dude. person? It's hard. Yeah, as a young woman, right. and, and today you're probably not going to be around very long, and that's right. unfortunately what we're we're up against right. But now. it's a practice, right? For sure. it, it's you practice it each and every day, each and every time, right? Well, thank God for basketball, you know, because right. I get to go to the court, yeah. I get to go play basketball for my three hours or my four hours, and just go crazy. I can yell at people as much as I want. I can <laughs> throw the ball at the roof. It is true. I can do whatever I want. If you've seen me play basketball, you you're like, like you're like, who is this dude? Like the dudes <laughs> would be like, Kai, you're so nice when you're not playing, and then you're that's my outlet. Yeah. You know, that's my opportunity. And I would encourage I encourage her to, you know, stay in her dancing, people to work out. Um, for young ladies, they don't really have that outlet as much. Men, we have sports, we have weightlifting. Young ladies, if you're listening, please find an outlet. If it's doing hair, if it's watching your soap operas, whatever, it's, try to find it. It's important. It's it's cathartic. It's therapeutic. Because honestly, like most of the time, like you don't even realize how much you're you're dealing with that. Um, I've always been in a male dominant field in my career, and I've been ostracized. I, I've actually had a position completely removed. Because I wasn't, I wasn't part of the team. They just didn't see eye to eye with me. So I was in the military. Um, so I think women kind of learn to, I don't know, suck it move, up, just, move a certain way because we know that right. terrain. We know yeah. it's going to continue to perpetuate and exist, and there's nothing we can do yeah. about it. It's the patriarchal society that we live in. Yeah, it's it's. It's like second nature for us to kind of let it go. Um, you know, one of the things I always tell Gil is like, the, and, and kind of what Kai is saying, like the only pain and the only person you're hurting by harboring any hate or emotion or resentment is yourself. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the incident happened or the thing happened and that person is over it. They're over it later on. They're over it a day you know, later and you're still sitting there in your you know anger or mm -hmm. your thoughts and everything and, and what happens it eats you up right it eats you up alive and i think that that's one of the things that i've had to learn with just growing up one a woman latina and and you know having some disabilities like yeah. it, it, it was it, it's just something that i had to learn that i could hate everyone and i can hate the situation i was in i can hate you know everything but who was it gonna hurt at the end of the day it was myself i was becoming bitter i'm the one that's you know Feeding losing years poison. of my life exactly yeah, you are. and even like you said like even within um career wise you know and, and i and i think you're right like women we just we kind of have we learn to do that because there's so many setbacks and i'm not saying i could only speak for myself because i'm a woman <laughs> and i only know what i've gone through but i feel like there's always these things that we just naturally just need to live with and and that's that's one of my philosophies philosophies i'm not gonna say that i'm not angry and that people don't piss me off but then i'm just like all right i'm over it don't piss her off because it <laughs> <laughs> comes home no it doesn't ladies and gentlemen no i get over things really quickly i have i have no one that i can say i hate i have no one that because my mom would always say you know what don't say you hate someone hate is a very very strong word she's like you can say you dislike someone because you're gonna dislike them for a while but hate hate she was like don't say it so i i really don't i don't have anyone that i can i mean maybe i can think of one person now that i could say i hate but <laughs> you're like no no i'm on the mic but yeah, uh but do. you know it's it's it, it's just one of those things you have to do for yourself and not for anybody else and not for that person you know but i but mean like you. you guys found it within your your podcast your radio station like you guys use it the same way that she does with salsa dancing or i do with basketball like Find it. You know what I mean? Find it. Whatever it is, if it's painting, if it's paper mache, poetry, find, writing, find prose, it. comedy. If I'm it's telling comedy. find it, please. Yeah. Because you have so many people that are unfulfilled in their respective lives because 
They work. They, they take care of their kids. They take care of their husband. They take care of their wife. And they haven't found something for themselves. I don't play basketball and make a lot of money from going to Mexico. I play it because it makes me happy. It makes me um, feel alive. I can express myself on the basketball court ways that if I did in real life, I would probably get shot. You know what I mean? What I can do on the basketball court or uh, my, you know, when I write or I can do that and not, you know, feel filtered. So whatever it is, find it because that's what's going to keep you going. You know, that's going to be like, you know what? I want to get to the gym. You know, I want I want to go dancing. I want to do so, the next podcast, do that next yeah, story, whatever it is. I have a purpose. Absolutely. And if you're not connecting with your I feel soul that. Yeah. purpose, then you're missing out on life. That's right. why we're here. Yeah. As a human being, we have the, we want to do something. We want to create. I believe that we all have a purpose and we need to create something. Mm-hmm. We have a yearning to do something. Like it, We always ask, like, what's the purpose of life, right? You're, the purpose is to do something. I feel like that that's where a lot of anxiety and depression comes from is because we're not living up to our full potential. Yeah. You hit it but on like, the head. Sorry, to cut you well, off. I mean, being a creator, being creative, we are meant to create. We are meant to um, make things in yeah. our vision, right? And that's why artwork is so important to people. It's like you see that in an actual form right you bring it to life i feel like we brought this organization to life that was our baby that we birthed you know and you continue to see it grow and you're proud of it if you don't make something you have nothing to be proud of and that's the issue so yeah that would create anxiety that would create depression yeah just inactivity. Yeah. And, and, you know, and then we can segue to other stuff. But inactivity, that, that, that's what we saw from COVID. People not being active. People not um, going out. True. Interacting with people. Um, hanging out with family members. I've had fa- some family members, they didn't see their mom for two years, you know, because they wow. didn't, didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to affect them with COVID and stuff like yeah. that. It's just inactivity, um, being idle and, and just, you know, missing opportunities. Yeah. I hear it. Well, glad we're we're three years apart from that, but I mean, we're still trying to. I mean, as businesses and as organizations grow, we're still feeling the effects from yeah from we'll the feel pandemic re- repercussions from that for a long yeah. time. And try to make sense of it along the yeah. way. That's the thing. It's like how do we piece it together in a way that makes sense? Right. So as we switch gears, uh, we're gonna talk about your upcoming event. Uh, so do you want two souls? Do you want to jump in yeah, here and get her up here. we can go ahead and uh, we carpooled here together? Oh, you so did! Oh, care. dang! Looking for the car as well. Like, <laughs> what was the who had the ox for the ride? <laughs> what was the what was the playlist like? Oh, she she played the <laughs> oh. mode eighties. Like I felt like I that's why you can use those ones. Yeah, I was back oh, in my element. Don't listen. To <laughs> no, no, you. All right. Hey. Yeah, she was loving my playlist. Hi, guys. Yes. <laughs> she was like, "Oh, I like it. I like it." Oh, flashback. Yeah, she has late. her hair Ladies. all feathered. You know, like she's back from the seventies and eighties. Oh so my goodness! Like, hey. She's all asking me, "What? When, what year were you born?" I'm like, "Why is that?" She's like, "I like your music." <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah. like, I grew up in a family of five generations, so I love all kinds of music. And yeah. I was 1980s. So for me, it was like, you know, we were the baby. Me and my twin sister are the babies of the family. Mm-hmm. So we listen to everything. 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 Mm-hmm. Nice. Yes. So tell me about how. So, first of all, we, we already established that you're a dancer. Yeah. Right? You, you all you dance. That's cool. Yeah, salsa. I lo- <laughs> salsa so, dance, right? So here's the thing. And, and just because it's fresh in my mind, I went to Stephen's Steakhouse on Saturday for a birthday party. And Stephen's Steakhouse used to be a place we would go on Sunday nights. And it's a long drive. The one drive. in Commerce? Yeah, it's yeah. a long okay. drive, man. Maria works there, Gil. 
All right. Love it there. Thanks for <laughs> saying that on the podcast. But... They don't know who Maria is. <laughs> I'm gonna go ask for Maria now. Yeah. Ask for Maria. Yeah, she got she got the cover. I know she she's got it. <laughs> she's got <the> <laughs> She'll be happy you promoted it. Oh yeah, there you go. Um so any and everybody who danced also would be at Steven's Steakhouse, you know, on occasional Sundays. But definitely for Halloween because they have a huge costume party. But anyways, um, yeah, I've been dancing salsa for about 23, 24 years. Um, it's part of the reason that um, I enjoy uh, the Latina culture so much. Um, and honestly, it's where I, I met my ex-husband. We were salsa dancers, so we went out four or five times a week. It was a, a regular thing. So we were regulars at Sevilla. Um, Long Beach? Well, we went there once in a while, but uh, Riverside was oh, our Riverside. staple mm -hmm. on Thursday nights. Uh, we go to Tapas, um, like I said, Stephen Sake House, um, Alhambra. There's Granada out there, so a lot of places that we would frequent. So for me, music is in, is just part of my blood. I I don't go a day without music, ever. And I'll I'll mm -hmm. put on salsa music and dance in my kitchen, and I'm okay. Like that's what, <laughs> that's enough for me. But um, there's a salsa community, and if you've never experienced it, like there are people who come together and dance salsa with each other all the time. It's a familia. Really? Yes. And now you know the salsa scene has changed. It's not so strong salsa. There's more bachata, and so. Where I used to go. I just out. found out about bachata not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, really? it's a lot of fun too. Yeah, it's I have, more sensual. Yeah, I have a friend, uh, Mario Solorzano. He's an artist, and he he's been dancing for like over ten years or something nice. like that. Yeah, it, it was kind of it was kind of random. Uh, we we were talking on the podcast, and he, I asked him what he was doing before painting, and he was like, "Oh, I was dancing." <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so just so you know, like bachata has really created a wave in mm -hmm. the last 10 years. So where we would go out dancing, we would go for salsa, classic salsa and live bands. Right. And now. Bachata, so this is a whole thing. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, Like you think of like, I don't know if you're familiar with all of the artists from the 70s, but like Mambo Classics. Mm -hmm. um they they have like just a huge fan base, right? And that's a classic salsa that really makes me want to dance. Mm -hmm. So Tiro Puente, mm -hmm. um, anybody really from that age is just like, it is the most pristine music to me. Like that's what I want to move to. So places yeah. like Steven's Steakhouse, they honor that. Mm -hmm. They create that vibe for us, salseros. Um, but bachata is starting to push mm -hmm. into that. So now instead of having 10 salsa dances in one bachata, now you have 50% uh, salsa, 50% bachata, and even full bachata, like no salsa. Oh, wow. um, so, yeah, it's changed the, the vibe a lot. Okay. So are you learning? I mean, does knowing salsa, does it make it easier to learn bachata? Salsa is technical. So most mm. people are doing bachata because they don't want to learn the technicalities of salsa. Salsa is an eight count. And bachata is a little bit more lenient. It's easier to learn. So I know bachata. I know salsa, cha-cha-cha, tango. I know all of that. It's no problem. But my favorite is salsa. <laughs> it is the best. It is the best. <laughs> so that's part of the reason. Like this... La Mas Festival that we're having October 22nd at Ed Hills Park in Redlands, California. Um, for me, it's a big tribute to the culture that has completely accepted me and brought me into their circle. Um, and then also enjoying that culture and loving music and dance. I feel... Everybody should have free salsa lessons. So we will provide that at the event. Really? Mm -hmm. nice. yeah. Okay. yeah. So Joe Quinones, she is a longtime salsa instructor in the Inland Empire. She teaches every Thursday at Alhambra 
Granada. Um, and she's just been a staple. She's amazing. And she teaches bachata and salsa. So she'll be our, our main instructor that day teaching to the community. Wow. Yes. That is cool. So, I mean, our headliner will be a nine-piece salsa band. They're called Latin Sounds. Nice. I want to go. Yes. Yeah, you what, what, go. Day, what day is it? October 22nd. October 22nd. On a Sunday. And Two Souls is going to be MC. Yay, I got chosen. <laughs> <laughs> she looked me up. She was already like, hey, hey. Actually, please. Paul. It was Paul, yeah. Yeah, Paul From Ramirez. From Club Band. Mm. Mm. Shout out to Paul. <laughs> and they'll be performing. Yep. Be oh, okay, cool. Yeah. That's, That's one band yeah. that will be there. We'll have Sal y Isela. Sal and Isela y los salseros. Mm-hmm. And we'll have Heroes del Sol. Heroes del Sol. Those are my boys right there. <laughs> So, I mean, those are four bands that will have for free to the public. And this is just meant to be a huge celebration. Obviously, Hispanic Heritage Month kind of falls in between. Um, but it helps us to just like come together, just like we do for Soul Food Fest for Black community. We come together for the Latina, Mexicana, Indígena, and... Um, who am I leaving out? Chicano cultures. Mm-hmm. So we'll have speakers. We'll have, again, our free market alongside artisans, vendors who make their own products. And we always have service orgs and nonprofits who can provide resources to the community. And they all need to be more focused on the culture that we're representing. Nice. Wow. Definitely. So what was your initial idea for something like this? Originally, it started yeah. as a is a woman's celebration. Well, you did it last year, right? But then changed the name? Correct. Okay. Well, last year, it was the Latina Festival, right. which we had to change last year because mm-hmm. we called it the Latina Fest. And I think that name is trademarked in L.A. They have a big Latina Fest. Mm, okay. Uh, so we actually had to change it to the Latina Festival. And you um, said that's the one that you, people were kind of, you were getting a little backlash because of the yeah. So the we name? yeah we partner well the name yeah you bring up the name. The reason is because you know we want to be educated on how to be more inclusive. You know, and we're not going to get it right every time. So we tried, and, <laughs> and somebody I respect very much said to me, Janelle, respectfully, you're leaving out many cultures by calling it the Latina Festival. I said, okay, how can we how can we correct it? How can we make it right? So on our flyers, we have like the backdrop, and on the backdrop it said Indigena, Mexicana, Chicano. So we still represented everybody, even though the name was Latina. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Just trying to do what we can. Yeah. Um, and how do you how do you kind of cause so I'm backtracking I think like two years now. Um we did uh, for my family's business, we did. We wanted to do for for Latino Heritage Month. We wanted to, um, you know, kind of shout out a business. I, I think I've said it on here before, but we wanted to shout out a business or anybody in our community that was doing something, you know, really cool. Um, so we did like a post, but I put Latinx, right? Mm. This is two years ago. <laughs> I did that before too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I so I did that, and then I said, you know, tag whoever you want us to showcase and everything. Well, we got a lot of people that tagged people, but then we got all those people that were like, why would you use that? I'm no longer supporting your business. You lost a customer. This is ridiculous. This is who you guys are. And honestly, I cried. I cried because I was so, I was saddened and I was angry that we were trying to do something so positive for our community. And, and you know, within, like, I, I want to say, like, within my culture, I've always heard, you know, it's always another Mexican putting a Mexican down, right? Or another Latino oh. putting another Latino down. And I really felt that that day where I felt like, because I always used to tell my mom, no, I don't think so. Like, we, we can work as a community. We can be this. We can be that. And obviously, this is just one instance that happened to me, right? But I think it really, like, it really brought me down because I was really trying to do something really positive and I, and I, I was trying to be inclusive. I was trying to go with what, you know, I knew at that time and it like 
completely backfired on me. So the next year I didn't do it because I was like, no, I'm too scared to even like try anything. And then, you know, what if I don't and this and that. And and I, I'm kind of upset at myself that I let that be the factor that I didn't do it again. Right. And and I kind of I, I like that you're saying like that happened to you guys, but you guys learned. Right. You guys. um, Excuse me. You seeked out. How can I make it better? How can I learn from what I did? Um, how did you feel like when that happened? Um, I honestly, when this person I respected came to me and just, you know, asked me if I wanted to be inclusive, what that really looked like to me. I feel like that was a very respectful way to approach me. It was not, you know something I should take personally, but I need to be more educated, right? And I did the same thing you did, Amber. I used <laughs> Latin X and I didn't realize what it stood for. And everybody's like, she's trying to be this woke woman and she doesn't know what she's doing. Uh, that I felt and that backlash was very hurtful, very painful. And I could have walked away from it too. I I used it during the women's celebration. The women's celebration then turned into the Latina festival because it took place in October and I felt it was right for us to uh, honor the culture whose month it is dedicated to. Um, so you you could get it wrong. You could get it way wrong. <laughs> and it's okay. You, know. you know, you're still surviving. We learn from it. We've, we learn from the mistakes that we do, so... Definitely. But <laughs> that happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's painful. So yeah. just know that you can recover. And really, this is something that I, I try to share with other people, too. It's not about what you, what you, the mistakes you make, but really how you correct them and how you move forward. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all in your actions and people are going to see how you move. And if that doesn't tell them who you really are then they have no interest in supporting you anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that that was my thought Definitely. after where I was like, okay, we have X amount of support and X amount, you know, less people that are out here badgering us. Like I need to focus on more of the support than uh, that we have than the people that and are against thing. it. Yeah, but it, it it's hard, you know, it's hard because you do take it personal. It's like. You feel that you're just like, oh, come on, people. And, you know, <laughs> you made a mistake and you're part of that culture. I made a mistake and I'm not considered to be part of that culture. Mm-hmm. So that's where, you know, I just talk to other people to see, like, mm-hmm. how do you feel about it? I'm sorry mm-hmm. if I hurt your feelings. That was not my intention. But even if your intention isn't to hurt people's feelings, you have to learn from it. And you have to show that you respect and can move in a way that helps other people to not feel uh, disrespected. Have you felt any of that, like, during your experience dancing salsa? Never. No? Mm Oh, that's good. No. Yeah. I've always been accepted. That's why I think I'm kind of naive, Uh honestly. (laughs) I am. Like, I just think everybody is in it for the goodness and the fun and the happiness and just coming together and being yeah. good people. That's what I'm in it for. Yeah. So I wouldn't call people out if they made a mistake like that. It really would slide off my back. But right. Other people hold that very tight because, like I said, the more you identify with your identity, the harder it is for you to separate yourself from what other people do. But I also think that you're... You're being respectful, right, of like yeah, salsa and the culture and you're choosing or you chose to really learn about it and dive deep into it and love it and appreciate it. And it shows when you dance that you yeah. have an and appreciation for too. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because there, there's there's a lot, a lot of other people, a lot of other, you know, things that adopt um, like, OK, well, I'm like, I'm just going to say, <laughs> you know, there's people that adopt like tacos or churros or whatever right and and they love our food but they hate us yeah that's not cool and and that's when it hurts you know because it's like you're exploiting a part of us but you don't you only get to choose what you like from us right and take what you like but you don't like it as a whole and and that's when it hurts but i think 
the reason that you know you're so welcomed and everything is because you're doing it with respect and love for the craft and the art and the music and everything and it shows it's great yeah and i would say you know i married a peruano i married a peruvian so <laughs> we we went to peru i okay. learned about the culture i learned about the food and i was like so happy like <laughs> feed me <laughs> <laughs> Um, and just having the sense of the family, like there's so many things that are so positive in the culture that I think is amazing. Um, but yeah, when people exploit your culture, it's hard to watch that. It's hard to even um, support them as a person because you're just like, I know what you're about. You don't really care about me or my people. Um, I can't say I can relate to that. <coughs> My culture has never been exploited in that way. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, moving into like the g- good vibes that come with this event, I wanted to bring on Two Souls, not just because she was uh, referred by somebody I respect, but also because she is an amazing businesswoman who has... Mm. All these ties to music. So I'm like, who else would be better to just be up there and enjoying herself and inviting all of these people into the space? So how long have you you been doing this? (laughs) Thank you for that. Well, I mean, I just completed a year on the radio show. But I mean, as far as promoting, I know as far as promoting, it's been a, a couple years now. So I was actually here not too long ago as yeah. a guest, remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I'm getting to be the host for um, the show, you know, for the La Mas, you know, festival. And not only that, but to represent our culture, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mixed um, breed. <laughs> so, you know, my mom's Peruvian. Uh, we're oh, Afro. Really? Yeah, we're Afro-Peruvian. Nice. And uh, my dad is Native American. And then I was born in L.A., so... I'm a mixed culture, man, and so I get the best of, like, I guess the all these little worlds, you know what I mean? So it's just, like, having to have uh, been, out, uh, you know, picked out for the, the host, you know, for for representing all these wonderful, like, the Salceros, the, the Eros del Sol, the Quetzalcoatl Band, the, the others, the uh, Isela and, and uh, what is it, the Isela and um, Sal and Isela, and then the Latin Sounds. I mean, oh, my God, when I looked at the Latin Sounds, I was looking them up on YouTube because she told me who they were going to be, who's going to be there. And I was like, well, I got to get familiarized with who's going to be there so that way I can know what's up, you know, and pronounce their names right and all that other <laughs> stuff. So I was like, let me yeah. find out what kind of music this is. And I was like, man, like that band is huge. And it has all these instruments and all that. And that's what I love about the music. It's just like, like she said, music is in, in my soul. Like, mm-hmm. I listen to music all day. And as it is, I mean, I do the radio show too. So, but I still listen to music and I just love like, listening to the instruments. And music don't even have to have words sometimes. It's just the beat. Right. It's just, it's just awesome. And there's nothing that brings different cultures together or different um, cities or different communities together than music. Exactly. That's, that's it. That's it. You don't right. even have to know what they're saying, but if you have I love a beat Spanish and- music. <laughs> I have no clue. They can be talking about God knows what. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have to translate. I translate some of my favorite songs. Is I'm in the car and I'm singing them and like verse by verse, I'm like, this is what he's saying. This is what right. he's saying. And he's like, oh, no yeah. way. And that's one of my favorite things to do is to translate. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so, um, it's so funny to hear you say that because, I mean... It, I, I know a lot of words mm-hmm. to the salsa music I listen right. to, but it's because I've listened to it so many right. times. So like I'm the one on the dance floor singing as I'm dancing, and most of the men I dance with, they're like, how do you know the words? And I'm like, because I've been doing this for a while. For a long time, yeah. But um, I love the feature on Spotify that allows you to see the lyrics as you're listening because oh, yeah. that helps me to really it like, does. oh, okay, so that's the word they're using. I thought it was something else this whole time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah you I, could learn from it. Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing is to listen to a song that I've been listening to for months and then I'll tell amber about it she was like oh that's probably got to be the one of the saddest songs that you can ever listen to it's about a what was that what was that ramon ayala song about the little boy waiting outside and he froze to death that's like the saddest 
saddest song Ooh. in the world. You, wh- he was which like one listening is it? to it over and over. Um, what is it called? Oh man, I can't think of it right yeah. now. But I think it's called like Dos Monedas. I think is what it's called. And oh. it sounds really cool. <laughs> the, like I'm da- I'm dancing on the. He, he the I'm dancing like by a, myself. <laughs> right, but it's a buzz <laughs> kill song. Yeah, he yeah. thought it was like an uplifting, like you know, cool little song. And then I was like, that's like the saddest song known to like oh. all you know um norteño music is and it's like what is it de oro? Is that one? no it's called it, it's called like dos monedas i think it's called mm. dos like monedas? yeah and it's it's just i mean the basis of it yeah that one the basis <laughs> of it is is this little boy that's um going out and uh asking for money out in the street so that his dad can continue to drink mm. um and then he goes to the bar and he tells his dad i'm i'm really cold and i'm hungry and and I want to stop. And he's like, no, I need more money. So he sends him back out. And then when the man finally gets home, he sees his son in the, in the steps of their house. And he's already dead and frozen because oh it was so God. cold. And he's saying, like, I could never Gil? regain that. Oh yeah. And, and Gil's over here, like, playing it over and over. And I was like, that's, <laughs> that's like the, the best one that he likes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, but he had no idea what it was saying. <laughs> oh I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Make everybody cry. <laughs> I had to refine my dance moves. Okay, so yeah, I needed a do. song. All right. You know, when you connect to music, though. Yeah. Just like you. I said, mean, see, like it, it can mean the... the most horrible. Yeah. Right, but when it's good, it's good. I'm sorry. Yeah, when the music true. hits, it hits. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, that happened. Uh, the, this is a very good. This is a very great like thing that you guys are doing, at least for the the community of of Redlands. Uh, so what's what's in the future? Like oh. after this this event, like this, where can you pull up the um their flyer for it, Amber? So that the yeah, people. so the, so that day is going to be eleven to seven. The most well, of our most of our events are is eleven to one? five. Yes, <clears throat> um, most of our see how it says eleven to five. That one's That's wrong. The wrong one. Yeah, okay. so it's eleven to seven because the bands are going to continue performing. The vendors stay till five, but the bands are going to continue performing until seven. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the future, I mean, following this event, we have our other Giving Sunday in November, which is November 19th. And then we also have the Tour of Toys, which happens with the Hoopas. We go to six different cities in the Inland Empire and give away toys. Last wow. year, I gave away over 5,000 toys. This year, we're aiming 10,000. And that's on uh, December 21st. Nice. So, I mean... We're going to go out with a bang this year, but next year we're bringing our Giving Sunday Market to San Bernardino every month. Oh, so we're so working. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. we're working currently with the city to get that in place for January through uh, December next year. Wow. So we'll have actually two events each month, one in Redlands Whoa. and one in San Bernardino. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's so good. it'll be happening at this, you know, every month. You ready for that, Kai? Wow. <laughs> He's like, how, how do I get about to go back to Cancun? <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the way it works. But... <laughs> well, you guys are doing a lot of great things in, in your area. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah and we, we can't wait to see you guys get bigger and and you know just expand more and and more with the community and we're we're excited for everything that you know the universe has for you, you both and we you know, accept entire, that yeah we accept that and if you can get us any sponsors let us know <laughs> <laughs> i'm like <laughs> shout it out right now we're, we're, gonna, the yeah, universe. we're, we're gonna yeah. receive it yeah of course <laughs> there we go. Everything. Venmo, get the QR code, put it on the screen, Amber. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you guys are doing uh, an awesome thing here. Thank you. And Thank hopefully, you, for you guys us. can come and join us this time, like you did last time. Come mm-hmm. again. 
Oh, yeah. yeah we won't 22nd. have food mm. contests, but we yeah. will have plenty of food you can eat. And you can take salsa lessons. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the salsa lessons will happen um, around like 6 o'clock, 6.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be when the salsa band is actually set up, so... Um, and, and the live band yeah, too. Live band, so yeah. Whoa, yeah, that's this cool. Is all outside, Shout so out to yeah, yeah, right there where we were at. That okay, same in the place, same same the court. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep, I like that's it. our place. Why? Okay. Because it's downtown, that's the place. and um, people can't. Just... Do those chess guys ever give you any? No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. We actually, no? we do really well with board game paradise. They bring all their people to play chess every Sunday, oh, yeah. so we took up their spot. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's and, what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, they're usually and they're there. And very, like, nice, no problems, okay. there's no issues. Yeah, they they may not like our music all the time, but <laughs> they sit there and they play their chess and they're happy. That's well, good. They, like the music. Like, they, they said, do? They, they said thank you for the music. Okay. Oh, yeah? Well, there you go. Hey, talk about the music. Did you really not know what the little girls were asking for? I know what oh, okay. they <laughs> I was like, I know what they asked. I was like, come on, Kai. But I don't have that in my phone. Yeah, in the phone. <laughs> you know, it's kind of to piggyback on what you said. Like, for the music, I wanted the young ladies to understand you have to be versatile. Yeah. So they just want Tommy the Clown, but you see the young ladies from Kinetic Movement. You know, one is doing jazz, she's doing reggaeton, yeah. she's doing um, hip hop. Like, be versatile. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I was trying to impart on the young ladies. She, if you're the only one doing Tommy the Clown, of course you're going to win. Like, yeah, that's not something that the, the dance companies are going to be familiar with. So yeah, absolutely. Just being versatile. But yeah, Tommy the Clown. Is cool. I had to show Gil who Tommy the Clown was. He was like, what? I'm like, Tommy the Clown. What's going on? I was like, Tommy who? Yeah. You, know, yeah. you got a birthday party, what? Tommy would be there. <laughs> Compton, Paramount area. Yeah. You know? Well, that's where I grew up, Paramount. Yeah. So I'm right next to Compton, so I know I'm talking to the clown. I didn't even know what it was. I had a, I found right out now. that same day yeah. too. <laughs> oh, you found out that same yeah, day? Yeah, I didn't even know what it meant. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I'm on Tommy the Clown. Everyone was all like from living color, right? No. No, 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 no. I don't know. Oh. No, I don't know. No, the little girl kept saying after. clown music, clown music, and no, I was like, so what Tommy is that? Tommy the clown is a real clown. Is it oh, real, dude? Really? I'll so show Tommy you guys. The clown, we need pull to him up. Pull him up. <laughs> he does crumb dancing. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. So that's, that's the name of the guy. All right. Tommy oh. is the clown on In Living Color. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. I was like, but isn't that's that the... not more time. All right. Because, <laughs> I mean, I know his character. Yeah, it's an actual guy named Tommy the Clown. He does, like, birthday parties and stuff. So uh, oh, like but somebody. the girls were asking for clown music, right? That's so, the music that he plays. He plays, oh, like, he plays it. Some crump music. Yeah. While he's dressed like a clown? That's why it's called Tommy. For parties? Wow. Oh, but it's there. been around for... At least 10, 15 years. 10, 15 years. Oh, where was I at? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and I work in radio. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I thought we were going to call over here. Oh, oh that's him? Oh, that's him? Is that him? <laughs> that's a clown, but that's not him. Yeah. Um, that's, that's Kai. He'll know. Kai knows. He said he knows. I don't really like clowns. I know they're scary. <laughs> I don't like so, clowns um, either. But yeah, he. Yeah, I think they're from like um like South Central. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, from, from South Central, area. from the LA area, and and they were you know coming out to events. This is the one I put right now. That's him. Maybe I have to forward it. Yeah, right. So we gonna use it. What? Right. Those are his fans. Mm. Oh wow, he has fans so, already that dress like him. <laughs> they got merchandise. Where did you get that? Where did you get that? Why are you still at the party? Like, in LA, they'll battle. I get this home. Oh. So wait, was he like the original person to come up with? Uh, the crunk dance and that's him right there. Right here. Damn. So that that's why the young ladies knew how to battle to that because they wanted to battle to Tommy the Clown, but the other girls weren't gonna know. I get it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, look at the little kid right there. Yeah, he's going. <laughs> Yeah. I asked them. I asked them 
if they wanted to battle. And you know, the little girls were a little apprehensive at first. And, and right. That's not typically what they do. They dance in the classes or in actual performance. But the moms were like, if my back wasn't messed up or, you know, <laughs> yeah. if, oh, for sure. if I yeah. didn't, you know, if, if my hair wasn't, uh, you know, in this ponytail, I'd be ready to go. Yeah. So, you know, we might have to get uh, something for the adults. Right? I mean, maybe maybe we bring them back out for some reggaeton and they can do some performances for uh, Or let's get Tommy the class. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, uh, yeah. Tommy, if you're listening, come to Tommy, our next Tommy, come to. Right? Tommy, come out to the podcast and then. Please. He's really cool, honestly. You know, now be, well, yeah, because I grew up in that area and in mm-hmm. that era of when he started coming out, and I went to like a show one time, like a like a backyard thing, and yeah, she was, was there. Yeah, that's why when she said it, I was like, oh, I know who he's talking mm. about. Mm. <laughs> okay, you learn something new every day. You do learn something about me. <laughs> yeah. like I <laughs> But I was really impressed with the teachers um, from the kinetics. I think that's what they're called, right? Mm-hmm. Kinetic, yeah. Yeah, the kinetic, um, the little boats. All the all the kids and their teachers were just like so enthusiastic of um, like doing the dance off with the other students. They were like, you know what, we're gonna represent. And and then I got that um, that one teacher that was break dancing. I got him good on the video. I did a video, and then I went on TikTok, and then I uploaded like. Uh, a Run DMC song mm-hmm. and I attached it oh my god it looks so awesome I liked it so I posted it on my Instagram and then they, they messaged me the, the group they were like oh my god that's so awesome <laughs> you know one of the songs I think it's from White Chicks <laughs> it goes out on the, one of the movies uh-huh. yeah it's a Run DMC song that comes out on there and then I, I made it to where it could kind of like match to what he was doing when he was moving his head and stuff and then when he went to the little girl the little girl was like this to him <laughs> and the other team like get away yeah that was so I didn't expect it. I, I didn't expect for for that to happen there. It was cool. Yeah, I, I, it was exciting. I yeah, and we I had, had uh, front row seats too. I know because we were the so judges. The whole show. <laughs> yeah, as, as food uh, judges, you are given front seat. Yeah, yeah to all awesome. Yeah, we had front seats. <laughs> well, if we go to the La Mas um, festival, festival, uh, I'll, I'll judge food over there. So, I said that on my own. I'll, I'll set up, I'll set up my own table uh, at the I mean, end. You will support basically. Yeah, yeah, you're basically ready. supporting local vendors, so you will be supporting all day. Right? Cool. This works. time is gonna come out of pocket. That's fine. That's fine. We have a budget for that. So. Ooh, well We're then, gonna... we'll invite you to every event. We, we have a built-in budget for food, right, Amber? We do. At least I hope so. If not, but um, yeah, you guys are doing a great job at uh, getting the community together. It's 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 good to see that. Thank you. That people are out there yeah. and actually trying to make a difference. Yeah, definitely. I love it. I think we've been consistent enough for you know a period of time, so people know we're 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 here for the long haul. We're not yeah. just trying to do things and disappear. Awesome. So, well, and, if you, and and then I want to say something really quick too because sure. um I was I was really uh, grateful to know that she's in Redlands when she offered like oh you know we were looking for someone to do the MC for the show and we're in Redlands and I said oh my God I'm in Redlands too like that's where I'm syndicated at I'm my radio station so me being a part of the city and then becoming uh you know one with them as far as like helping them out and doing this too you know and and hopefully near in the future you for know sure. be, being able to do other events with them you, you live know, down it, the street I'm from like my oh my house. gosh you know there so you then go. when I when I brought it up to um the people that I and my team on my radio show about what we're, we're doing they're like oh my gosh you know so we got your back you know and we're gonna you know post this post that for you you know don't worry and so even within my team on on my radio station they were like oh man this is great like this is a step up to your radio show you know because i'm giving that platform to and then you know all the comments that i got from the little things that we got with the judges like everybody was like oh that's so cool of you you know this and this and that and so, like, we got a lot of support, a lot of support for um, being a part of a community. And that's what they want to see. And that's what I always um, talk about on my radio show as well. Like, when I'm presenting all the musicians, all the artists and stuff like that, I'm always like, hey, you know, we got to do more community-based events and, you know, bring the artists out, the musicians, everything. And far, as far as vendors, too, you know, helping out the vendors because they do their own uh, businesses. And some of them, that's what they're living off of. So it's better to help them out, you know. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And, and that's... That's the type of support that we we wanted to create, and we've been, like I said, consistent with that. And so um, for anybody listening, if there's some type of event that you'd like to celebrate, 
um, during a month, you know, a uh, PI or however, you know, you want to celebrate something like, let us know, like, we're okay to create that space for you to showcase your culture for you to have that safe space, inclusive space, where you can have a good time. That's part of what we want to do. So and if there's anything that Amber and I can do to help you with anything, let us know. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Yeah, of yeah course. the setup here is top notch. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, very, it. Very, very yeah. organized. So. Awesome. <laughs> I, I tried it. That's my O C D. Really? You're yeah. the organized yeah. one? Yeah. I'm the organized one. Yeah. Well, he he only organizes his studio. Yeah. I organize the rest of Every, the house. everything else. <laughs> it's only this little square right it's here. Yeah, this, this is my this this is ten by ten. Was this, this your man domain. cave and it turned into a radio podcast? Mm. No, he um, always lived alone. I just started yeah. living with him six months ago. So yeah. the whole house is a man cave. <laughs> it's still in my hey, I'm it trying is. to preserve. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to preserve it. But uh, no, it, like she said, I, I organize this, but she organizes the the rest of my life. So, <laughs> That's what women do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if there's anything that we can do to help, you guys just don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I can, You're doing it. I'm, a, I'm, it. Always, I'm always up for it. Amber's always up yeah. for it. So um, don't hesitate. All right, perfect. We're here. Thank you. So is there anything that a person right now is listening like how and they want to support what's the what's the one thing that they can do right now i mean we're always accepting donations it's a 501c3 but i think the thing you could do right now is let other people know what's going on so that they can show up too they can experience it and have a good time if you ever wanted to get your girls together to learn salsa here's your opportunity and uh, if you ever wanted to just come out and support local vendors and talent and service orgs and nonprofits, this is your opportunity. Um, I think that's the best way. You can also follow us on Stronger Together Now underscore IE on Instagram. And uh, just reach out to us. If you have any ideas, we, we respond. It's us responding. Okay, so Kai will have a full-on conversation with you in the DMs. No problem doing that. All Janelle, right. Kai, Two Souls, thanks for coming out and doing the You're podcast. Well, thank so, you for having me. Our us. pleasure. Tell us where we can find you. You said Stronger Together Now. Wow, not later. There we go. Stronger <laughs> Together Now. <laughs> <laughs> So you have your link up there. Pull up the their link tree. They got everything in there. Yeah. So if you are a vendor and you'd like to participate in our Giving Sundays, you click on the STM plus RMM Giving Sundays link. That will take you to the job form to apply. Um, we have our San Bernardino Giving Market, but that will be updated for 2024 once we get the dates in place. We have our Youth Empowerment Program, which we didn't even talk about today. Um, and that is in partnership with San Bernardino Valley College. Um, so yeah, a lot of articles, a lot of different things, uh, interviews and things like that. There's places to donate. Venmo, Cash App, nice. our website. We have merchandise. Like, There's just so many ways to connect with us. Awesome. But go to their links. Go follow them. Go shoot them a DM. Tell them how great they're doing. Uh, donate. There's, there's a lot of options, right, for That's support. Right. That's right. And, and anybody you can volunteer. Can do. If you have free time, you want to get out there and be a part of it, we'll take you on as a volunteer. Our Ooh. board members are kind of tapped out, so we don't have any more spaces. <laughs> but, you know, next year, two years from now, we could bring you on as a board member. Awesome. So donate, volunteer, uh, attend events, right? Mm -hmm. The three things that they can do right now. That's right. Awesome. And you and can share go the page. <laughs> yeah, share exactly. Share the page. Th that's, share the events. that's the number Every one show thing. Counts. You can go down to the show description, go to their link, follow them on Instagram, and share whatever they have going on. That's always free. That's that's right. Exactly. That's always free. Always. Right. And if you're living in the city of Redlands or any surrounding cities, go check them out. Yeah, we'll have a uh, block on the block this Saturday in Rialto. The Mind Bus. <laughs>
Podcast. Anything else? That's, That's it? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Mind Buzz podcast. Subscribe to the Mind Buzz YouTube channel and watch full podcast episodes. Keep up with the hosts, guests, and upcoming events by following the Mind Buzz on Instagram at the Mind Buzz. See you on the next one.